Hey, g'day guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have this HDJ79 series Toyota Land Cruiser on the dyno, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a guided tour on what it takes to get 300 plus horsepower out of your 1HD FTE 79 series. Let's take a look. Alrighty, so you're ready to take the next step and take your FTE to 300 horsepower. What do we need next? Well, we need seven things to actually make this kind of power. Just seven things. Let's start with the turbo. So on a FTE, the stock turbo is actually pretty good. Like in terms of a factory turbo, they're extremely reliable. Uh, you can push them up to 18 PSI and 200 horsepower. And we have worked on hundreds of these. I've never had to replace one because it broke. That's not to say that they're strong though, because above that power, they just explode into pieces. So 200 horsepower, 18 PSI, that's your limit on a stock turbo. So we're gonna need to upgrade it. This particular car has fitted to it a UFI 18G turbo. They are a direct fit up onto the manifold. Uh, so that will bolt straight up. They're a direct fit up onto the exhaust. They do, however, have two changes on the front side of the turbo that you're gonna have to keep in mind when upgrading. So they do have a four inch inlet snout on them and they do have a standard outlet on the turbo, simple, like a normal turbo would. It's not like a stock turbo upgrade replacement. So the 18G turbos are an awesome option for anyone who's looking for anywhere from 240 horsepower all the way up to say 300, 320 horsepower on like a good day on a happy engine. That's the first upgrade you're gonna to wanna to make is the turbo. Following that, we are gonna to have to keep all that charge air nice and cool. So we opt for the PDI intercooler range when it comes to upgrading intercoolers on any of our vehicles here and they are absolutely fantastic. PDI have actually gone out there and done it for a UFI, a G turbo, a stock turbo, a, like every sort of turbo you can think of because there are differences between them all. They offer a kit for it. Incredibly important to have a nice front mounted intercooler. Nothing beats it. It does not inhibit the function of this radiator whatsoever. A lot of people are concerned that they're gonna fit put something in front of their radiator and the car's gonna run hot. Obviously you can go and do a crossover delete as well or retain it. This one has retained it. There is zero performance restriction in retaining it as long as you delete your heater grid there. The next thing you're gonna need is a set of high flow injectors. So the stock injectors are only capable up to about on a fresh set with a good pump on a good engine on a good day. I've seen them do 255, 260 horsepower. I don't really like the idea of pushing an injector all that way though, because obviously we, the injector's physical size is only so big and we only have so much crank rotation to be able to inject that fuel into the engine. And if we're just working the injector too hard for too long, that's actually where you're gonna get engine failures from. So a second you want more than 230 horsepower, I highly recommend going for a higher flowing set of injectors. In this particular case here, uh, we've gone for a 300 to 330 horsepower fuel injector for this UFI 18G turbo, and we found that to be a phenomenal combination. It's a very clean injector, so you're gonna have no soot, as well as a ton of power available. Uh, the bigger the injector, the le less work the other parts of the fuel system have to do. So if the injector is a bigger size, the less work the pump has to do and the less tuning we actually have to do to get the fuel into the system. So a mechanical fuel upgrade is 100% something you're gonna need on your FTE. We're gonna need a clutch upgrade. Okay, so we go for the MPC 1300 newton meter clutch kit on these things. They are fantastic. They have a very light pedal feel. Um, bolt straight up. Not a whole lot to say there. They've been out for a very long time. They're very well known as some of the most durable, toughest clutches for these vehicles that are available right now. Next thing, and one of the most common things that these cars already have done to them is a three-inch exhaust. Pretty much every single 79 that we have come through here for a uni chip or turbo upgrades, anything like that, already has a three-inch exhaust system fitted. Because it just, why wouldn't you? You got a cruiser, track a three-inch exhaust on it. They're cheap as. If you want the above that sort of 240 horsepower mark, we're gonna have to touch on the next thing, which is airbox. The stock airbox, I actually just linked that whole thing up to the stock injectors. So if you've got stock injectors, you can't outrun the stock airbox. But if you wanna upgrade your injectors, you're gonna be out of stock airbox before you even know it. So this is our airbox option in this vehicle here. They run a massive pod filter. It's a paper style filter. So for those guys out there that really get into their filters, this thing is like, I would take this up to Cape York through all the bulldust in a heartbeat. 
the things are incredible. Obviously with this airbox as well, it does have things like a water trap down low. Uh, so if you were, you know, for example, to take some water in from a stainless steel snorkel, which they are so common for doing, then it does have a little duckbill factory style drain on it as well as a little sump for it, the water to drain in. Then when the sump builds up, the water drains out. I think that's pretty cool. As well as a complete four inch all the way to the turbo intake pipe. The final thing we're gonna need and the thing that ties it all together is our Unichip. So Unichip on a 1HD FTE, the factory ECU is not remappable. So if you're into tuning your diesel, you probably heard the term remap. Uh, remap is you're recalibrating the factory data inside the ECU and then writing that data back into the ECU and tuning the vehicle on the dyno accordingly. On a FTE, they are non-writable or readable, so we have to piggyback that ECU with a Unichip. The Unichip allows us timing control, boost control, fuel control, throttle control, coolant temp protection, as well as giving us the option to have five tunes at our fingertips, which can be ch changed on the fly, um, which can be set as an immobilizer, and it can give you all those little features that people love, like your lumpy idle and your limiters on one tune and whatnot. So, that's where this video is now going because as you can tell it is sitting on the dyno as i explained it to you so this isn't just a lecture from me on ftes even though i could talk about them all day this is actually a little bit of a demonstration of these parts now working in complete harmony with each other because this is easily by far our most popular package that we offer for the ftes Follow me now while I carry out the five tunes on this car, starting from bone stock all the way up to our 300 horsepower top dog performance package tune. That is our dead stop power. So keep in mind that is still with a set of uh, plus 30 injectors and uh, front mount and a turbo upgrade. But with the tuning that we can do, obviously we can reduce that amount of power that you get on a stock tune all the way back down to stock by limiting fuel and boost and whatnot. So a bit more than stock obviously, but no, no more than what you would have if the car was still stock. <laughs> Okay, I am very happy with that for that, like, I'm not against making tuning look easy. I don't think it's necessary to have people have this idea of we need to do hundreds of power runs to get your car like the others. I think that if you're a shop and you're repeating the same setup on a diesel over and over again, you cannot establish like a baseline level of performance, then I don't know what you're doing with your time, but 326 horsepower, 840 newton meters of torque, and we're seeing peak torque at 2200 RPM. It's a full 840 newton meters by 2200 RPM. And that was at about a 17 and a half to one, flat across the whole RPM range at 26 and a half pound of boost. We could probably squeeze a bit more boost into this thing now and lean it out just a smidge. But on the power tune, there's just no need. 17 and a half to one, 18 to one. Uh, I'm happy with that for a power tune, that's exactly where we want it. It's still gonna be nice and clean. So now we're gonna roll through these other maps now and just set the car up so it's nice and safe for towing, economy, a four by four tune. And uh, yeah, that's it. We get to wrap it all up. So let's get it. sums up the five tunes that we get on the FTE. So obviously we've got our power tune at 330 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque. That thing's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not pushed all out to the limit, but that's a ton of power. 
Obviously, we've got our towing tune there, 270 horsepower, 600 and something new meters of torque. Oh, okay, that pretty much, in a YouTube kind of done in five seconds, but probably took five years to make work good, kind of tune done. All right, so obviously we uh, had our uh, four runs shown there, okay? Uh, that's because the fifth tune is actually a four by four tune, so it doesn't need to be run on the dyno. It's the same as the power tune with the doughy throttle. We did finish up there at a massive 326 horsepower and 840 new meters of torque. That, those, that is, I'm actually very surprised. Normally the 18 Gs max out at 300. So it could just be that's a happy engine. It's a good day, who knows? That pretty much wraps it up for the FTE 300 horsepower package. So I hope that gives you some sort of idea of what parts you're gonna need, to put onto your car to get it working absolutely perfect to get these sort of numbers and reliably because at this sort of power level when tuned correctly with the right parts there's no reason it can't go as long as it did before you did the work to it potentially last even longer because people actually give them a little bit more maintenance a little bit more care and they've spent a little bit more money on them so they care for them just that little bit more than you would have if it was just a half million old car that wraps it all up if you want to see more videos on the dyno like this don't forget to subscribe, chuck the video a like. Of course, if you have any questions about any of this, I will respond to every single comment in the comment section below. So chuck comment. All right, I'll see you later, guys.